Hey there, art students, Mrs. B here. Today we're gonna do an assignment that I used to do with my high school art students as one of their sketchbook assignments, but I'm gonna adapt it for my third through sixth graders. And we are going to paint with coffee. And we're gonna do a really simple sketch of a coffee mug, and we're gonna use coffee to paint it. This is a great project for this quarantine or shelter in place that we're stuck at home right now because you might not have watercolor at home, so you can use cold coffee um, with no sugar or no milk or cream in it or anything. It has to be plain black coffee. Um, and you can use that to add a really cool look to your project or to your drawing. And it's kind of like painting. So let's get started. We're gonna draw a cylinder. And we're gonna draw first, and a cylinder is basically, as you probably know, it's a form that's based on a circle. So it's a three-dimensional form. So we need to draw the top this is called an ellipse of the cylinder. So I'm gonna start, we're gonna make it look like it's at about eye level on a table. So we're gonna draw a sideways oval about like this. Usually it takes me a few tries to get this right. So if it takes you a few tries, that's totally fine. Sketch it a few times, erase the lines you don't like. Whoops. And then just sketch the ones you do like. It is really, really important to make sure that the edges of this are not pointed. And what I mean by that is that you are not drawing it like this. It should not be pointed because a circle is not pointed. So you should not have this pointed. So do not do that. Okay, so you have your ellipse on the top. So we're going to draw two lines that come straight down. You can use a straight edge if you want. I'm not going to. I'm just going to make some loose sketchy lines here. Okay, and then we are going to make the bottom, and I know I'm going kind of quickly, but you can always pause the video or go back a little bit and fix it if you want to go back. So we're going to make this pretty much the same curve at the bottom. You can even trace that with your finger on the table. Look at that. That is a curve. So we want to draw that curve shape along the bottom. And mine is certainly not perfect. We're not going for perfect. We're just going for where we're doing our best you know, short amount of time and that we're learning. Okay, so we have the basic part of our cylinder. So if you are drawing the kind of mug that doesn't have a handle, you are done. But I would like you to try to draw a handle. We're gonna draw a pretty simple one. I'm gonna start a little bit below this ellipse and I'm gonna draw a short line that comes out to the side like that. And I'm gonna kind of round the edge down a little bit like this. And then I'm going to bring that down, not quite to the bottom. Like, do you see where it starts to curve? That's what I'm going to call like the bottom back of the mug. And I'm just going to curve that down to here. Because mugs are, even if it has kind of a straight handle, it's still kind of curved. And then I'm going to, I mean, there's lots of different ways you can draw a handle. I'm going to make it kind of go up like that. And then back up. Again, if you want to make yours go straight across, you could. It's up to you. So we're, this is just a side view of a handle. Um, if you want to draw like where you can see the underside of it, you could do that too. And then with my mug, if I set this mug here, I think you can see there's a shadow. And I know the angle is different, but there's a shadow from the light. So I'm going to draw the shadow from the mug also. I'm just going to draw a couple lines where that shadow would be. I'm gonna do a little bit of shading with pencil. It is not gonna be very fancy. It's gonna be a little bit loose. I'm gonna use the side of the pencil. It's even gonna be a little scribbly. And since this is for my third through sixth graders, I'm even gonna have you use your finger or a, you can use a paper towel or a tissue to blend a little bit. And the reason I said for my third through sixth graders is because if you were one of my high school students, you know that I would always want you to blend with pencil pressure. Um, but this is, again, this is for a younger age and this is supposed to be just kind of a quick sketch. I'm gonna add a little bit of shading up here on the left. Blend that a little bit. And then I think I'll add a little bit of shading on this side of the mug. That is not very fancy at all. I know you can do that. And then blend that out a little bit. 
You can even turn it to the side. Add a little bit more. It's up to you how much you want to do this. You don't even have to do it at all if you don't want to do the shading. Maybe a little bit underneath the handle. And then we're going to make a line where the coffee would be. So we're going to make that line. We probably should have done this first, but we'll make a line right here. See that little rainbow line right there? That's where our coffee is going to be. And we are going to shade that a little bit darker. So the first way, if you don't want to draw that line, it's like the coffee cup is empty or the coffee's in the bottom. If you draw that line like we just are right now and color that in, it's like there's coffee or hot chocolate in the mug. You can use a paper towel or a tissue or your finger to blend that in. Use my eraser to clean up any little weird edges. Okay, so now the fun part. We're going to use a paintbrush and coffee. And I'm just going to add some of this. It's not going to look really dark at first, but don't worry. We're going to add some of this over the parts that we shaded. We're going to add it over the coffee part. Over the rim of the cup. On the handle. And I'm kind of leaving some of it in little puddles. I'm even going to put some on the shadow. Maybe for fun, I'll even drip a little bit on the edges. So, doesn't look like much yet, right? When it dries, though, it's really light. If you have too much, you can use a paper towel and kind of just dab it a little bit. Let it dry for a while. Be patient. But when it dries, you're going to get these weird, cool little splotches that it makes. I think it's really neat looking. And it's made with coffee, so I think that makes it really cool. I'm going to tell you a little bit about an artist who uses, um, we would call this organic or like materials from nature. Like coffee, tea, um, different spices in her artwork. And I will tell you about her. She's one of my former students and she's an artist in Chicago. So I'll come back and show you about that. One more thing you can do if you don't have a brush, splatter some um, coffee on a piece of paper and let it dry. Be patient, let it dry, come back to it in a few hours. I did this one a couple hours ago. And then you can add all different kinds of like weird lines and fun stuff to it. Um, this is a painting that I did with watercolor like that. So I made a lot of different like spills with the watercolor and then I went in and added different textures to it. So maybe you, if you don't have a brush and you want to do something with coffee, spill something on here, come back, and then you can draw outlines around it. You can add stripes around it, circles. Maybe you can even make a monster out of it or a landscape or something else. So spill a little coffee on a paper, and then maybe you can make a really cool abstract masterpiece out of that too. See you soon. Next, I want to show you the work of Brittany Mara, a Chicago-based contemporary artist who happens to be a former student of mine from when I taught high school. I love Brittany's work, and I wanted to show you her work because she makes paint from natural materials, kind of like we're doing with coffee and tea, except she uses flowers, herbs, seeds, all different things. And she makes these beautiful colors, as you can see in these abstract paintings I'm showing you from these different materials. She mixes that um, with traditional art materials like charcoal, which actually is made from burnt wood. Um, some of these photos, you'll see her working in her studio. And I like that you can see what an artist's studio looks like and you see her painting these artworks. A lot of them are really large, um, so I want you to notice the size of them too, which is why I included pictures of the artist working on her work. You can check out her work on her Instagram or ask your parents to check out on Instagram. I believe it's called Brittany Mara Art. Um, and that's B-R-I-T-N-I-M-A-R-A. -A. Um, so check out her work. She also has a website. So um, I hope you have fun making art and that you enjoy this process and maybe you're a little inspired to try new things like Brittany did. Have a good day and be kind to each other.